Hey guys, welcome back to the Skymaster F-18 build assembly video series. Um, it's going good. We got our parts order, which is awesome. Uh, super exciting that we got that stuff because now we can continue with the build. Uh, we were kind of held up a little bit because of some of the little parts we've been waiting for, but uh, that did show up from DreamWorks, so we're good. Um, we'll continue on with this, but uh, last little thing, if you want to support the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Give the video a thumbs up and uh, let's dive in. All right, guys, so we are moving into the rudder setup now. Uh, once the rudder is set up, then we can work on focusing or then we can focus on routing the wires, getting the turbines installed and a lot of other stuff is relying on these rudders. So uh, there's not a lot of room to uh, to work in this area. Well, there's lots of room. It's just access is not great. So um, the rudder servo mounting is right there and we've got the rod sticking through to actuate the rudders right there um, what we can do to create more room is i haven't done the bolt up for the linear actuator so we can take that off open that up a little bit but uh, so that's where we're working on uh, manual is um, verbally pretty good in this area but um, pictures are not not very awesome so anyways um, step number one is uh, we're gonna get these servos set up and uh, we're gonna get the double um, servo horn installed and so how this is gonna be installed is we've got uh, um, we're gonna use a ball link on the servo end and there's gonna be a clevis on the actuating end because it's designed or drilled with a clevis hole so this is the uh, the end that mounts to the actuating rod like this. Okay, so step number one, gonna get that on the servo and get it centered. All right guys, because room is not great in here, um, I'm just showing you roughly what uh, what we're doing. So the servo's just put in place. Um, that uh, crank arm is just put in place. It's not uh, not fixed at all. And um, that's where we're sitting. So. What I'm trying to do here is figure out the length of our linkages because there's nothing listed in the manual. Obviously, it's going to change depending on your servo you're picking. But uh, you want the servo output to be at the back of the plane. And um, you can see it there. It's positioned towards the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my calipers, um, open those up, and uh, see if we can get a measurement from the center of the servo arm to the center of that bell crank and uh, hopefully that'll give us a rough idea of what our linkages need to be so we can get that set up. So hopefully I'll be able to catch this for you guys but um, one of the problems that I just noticed here and it may not be a problem but if you look at the two arms so the silver arm right uh, above my um, finger is the arm for the actuating rod. Now, if you look at the angle of that <clears throat> servo arm compared to the one that's actually mounted on the servo, we've got different angles. So I don't know if that's going to be an issue or not, but uh, just something I noticed with lining this up. Um, now, when I installed those pieces, Measurement from center to center is about 60 millimeters for that particular setup. Now yours is going to vary as I was just getting this lined up and checking servo height and things like that. Um, that's one of the things I noticed. Now it's going to be tough to see, but we can't angle that servo at all to match the angle of the uh, output shaft because the servo hits the uh, the skin right there. So I'm going to get this all hooked up and um, basically I'm going to create these linkages before I put the, the, uh, everything together and uh, we'll see what happens. Alright guys, so Skymaster includes these metric ball links which is great. Um, the 440 rod fits inside there. Um, the downside is the hardware they include. So this is metric hardware that goes through the ball link. Uh, threads into the hangar 9 or the um, the JR um, 
servo arms, which is good. Now, the problem is these screws are garbage, and uh, you can actually take these screws. I'm not going to do it because I'll save it, but you can take these screws and you can just bend it with your with your hand. It's it's pretty crappy stuff. So I always keep my uh, this all this stuff is miniature stuff from my old RC helicopter days, and uh, so we've got a two millimeter um, Allen head, which is the exact right size to fit through there and uh, these are a lot stronger than the ones included which feel like they're made out of tin so anyways we're gonna switch these out on the ball joints that uh, mount into the into the servo arm and uh, just a little tidbit for you uh, just be careful of that hardware alright guys so there's a shot of the linkage installed um, I'll show you a better shot when I take it back out, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do up that uh, set screw on the uh, the sh output shaft for the rudder and uh, see how everything lines up. If it, <laughs> if it all lines up good, I mean, that was a good guess, but uh, it looks pretty darn close from what I can see. All right, guys, so everything's temporarily installed. The servo's not screwed in or anything, but... Uh, the, the set screw on the, the output shaft is, is set up. Uh, it does actually look good. So what I want to do on this stage is plug the rudder in, uh, hook it up to the uh, radio system, and we'll see if we get enough travel. If we don't get enough travel, then we'll have to alter the mechanical setup um, to get enough travel out of it. So that's one of the things we're going to check before we put anything permanently in there. All right, guys, so I was just taking a closer look here, if we can get this any better. So these balls were actually installed on the bottom of the servo arm. Um, and I think we're going to move them to the top. That gets us a better line with the, uh, the output shaft uh, servo or uh, surface horn. And uh, because there's not a ton of movement in this... Uh, this actual rudder arm, I think that'll work out better. So if I go down this direction, there's some resistance there because we've got a clevis on the other side. But if I go on the top, then we're uh, we're a lot better off. So that's how we're gonna we're gonna make that change. Now we might have to adjust our uh, our length here because we're moving that clevis in one. Uh, we're moving this on top, so it's gonna take a little bit of figuring. But uh, this looks like it's all gonna work out good. All right, guys, so there's our final uh, rudder setup. Um, obviously, this stuff's been Loctited. We put a, a nut on there just uh, as a just-in-case. And there's uh, our clevises and everything. Uh, clevises, we put CA in the, uh, in the clevises, so there's no movement on them. And uh, that's it. So I'm going to put this in. We'll check all the movements and everything, and I'll show you guys the final product on the right rudder. Alright guys, I'll do a close-up here on my mirror setup, but uh, that is basically the right rudder complete. Um, works really, really well. I was actually quite impressed. Also, the ply on the rudder servo is not light ply, um, so it's uh, got better structure than the elevators had. And um, there's also two layers right where the servo screws in. So um, I'm going to plug this elevator in, or this, uh, sorry, I'm going to plug the rudder in, and uh, I'll show you guys what that looks like. All right, so that is the rudder setup. Right there, we're getting 35 millimeters of travel, which is what we're supposed to get. Nice and solid. Uh, mechanically, when you do this, there's basically zero play in the setup. You can feel a little bit of play in the uh, in the the servo itself, but uh, great, great setup. I like it. All right, guys, both rudders have been completed. Um, everything was basically exactly the same. Now the only difference is. If you look at the left rudder, um, I had to put the ball links 
connected to the servo arm on the, um, call it the, the side facing away from the servo. On the other side, as I've shown you, the ball links worked better on the side closest to the servo. So anyways, not a big deal. Works, uh, works just fine. Uh, everything for the rudders has been centered and set up, so our travel's all done, uh, which is great. So now all we need to do when we go to plug these rudders into the, uh, the XBUS ports on the JR16BPX uh, receiver is they can go in any of the XBUS ports, right? So um, that's it. So we got max travel set up, so 35 millimeters, and... Um, we can reduce it if, if necessary, but that's what the manual recommends as a max. So rudders are effectively complete. All right, guys. So with the uh, the rudders being done, um, the air brake being done, uh, the next thing we need to do in order to progress is going to be um, run the wiring from these rear pieces forward to the forward part section or forward section of the fuselage so just for reference my plan is to put the receiver um, on a plate right in this area i've seen that done on a couple other ones and i think it's a nice um, way to split the difference i was thinking about putting the receiver all the way in the nose right in this area so you could access it by taking the nose cone off we don't really need access to the receiver because there's nothing to plug in, unplug, unless we have to do some something major. And in that case, we can just take the cockpit out. So that's my plan, putting the receiver in this area. And then the benefit, in my mind, to putting the receiver in this area is we can extend the battery leads. Then we can extend the battery leads to the front of the plane. So we're, you know, having maybe a two and a half, three foot long battery lead. And we're also minimizing our leads for the servos. Um, by taking that extra two and a half, three feet out if we're going to the nose. So it's probably not a big deal. We could put it anywhere we wanted, but uh, a good way to split the difference and um, and keep the, uh, the elevator and uh, rudder leads kind of as short as possible. So that's the plan where we're locating the, um, the, uh, the main uh, JR box. Now, um, in our parts order, I did order a package of... Um, the power box wire now this is the heavy duty wire and um, they also make the thinner wire now on the heavy duty wire the uh the red and the blue leads are um, thicker and the white the signal line is still the same size as the other one but uh these two power box wires are for the elevators uh the other uh, wires here the heavy duty servo leads um, are for the rudders we're just using some some servo leads that we've uh, we've got uh, just to, to use them up basically so that's for the rear section now what we're also going to do is we're going to run um, a blank wire to the tail section just in case um, the owner or somebody in the future wants to put uh, some afterburner lights so that's something that we're going to do as well too and uh, we'll we'll run those um, probably the same length as these guys just so they're up near the the front of the plane and then those will be run now my idea is we're going to bundle all those wires together and we're probably going to run them um, well, I know I'm going to run them somewhere on the sidewall of the fuselage, but obviously away from the exhaust pipe. And we are going to be running them inside of uh, like a snakeskin type material. Uh, this is just a, um, a braided material. It does provide a little bit of protection from temperature, but it's mostly just for uh, abrasion resistance. So that's the plan, guys. I'm going to get this wire run, and I will show you kind of the finished product. I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to run it through the plane. Um, probably, looking from this side, my initial guess is probably going to be underneath the uh, the tanks there along the side of the fuselage. And uh, we'll just be attaching the wire bundles to the side of the fuselage. I uh, don't want to be coming through this area because then we're going to have to have wires coming over here and we want to save this area for 
our startup plate, which is going to be like our on off switch, air fill valve, stuff like that. We're going to build a, a little plate here for those things. So that's what's happening. And I'll, uh, once I get this wire finished or if I encounter anything weird, I'll show you, um, what's happening with that. Obviously, we have to also include our, uh, actuator for the air brake in that whole bundle, one of them, anyways. And, uh, so that's, um, in progress as well. All right, guys. So I'll show you how I work with this, uh, snakeskin stuff. So I measure it out, cut pieces as I need it, and then I uh, just use a lighter and melt the ends. Now if you're going to be putting the, the snakeskin over top of a big bundle of wires, once the ends melted you just take some pliers and stretch it out because it's going to be all stuck together. Okay, um, You don't need to use anything special to get this, this wire through here. Basically we've got three wires, I've got a bunch of different ends. Um, so all I'm trying to do is get the wire through the snake skin because it's only a portion of the length of the uh, the actual wire bundle. So I'm just going to fold everything over on the end and we just get it started. So you just get it started by pushing it over. And then once the, um, the wire is actually in there, the easiest way I've found to feed this stuff through is hold the the end push, this is the free end, the end of the wire bundles right there, push the end, grab it, and it just goes over top of the wire. So when you have a big wire bundle like that, it'll take a little bit of extra time to get it all through. And then once you get to an end like this that needs a little bit of help to go over it, I'll show you how to do that. And sometimes it just pops over by itself. And then we'll have this servo connector to work, work over as well. or servo keeper, I should say. So once I get enough slack, just come here and work it over the servo keeper. Can use pliers if you need to. And you really do have to melt these ends of the snake skin, otherwise it just frays like crazy. And then once it's over, you can come back to the end Continue bunching it up at that servo keeper and then usually it just slides over top of it. And then once you got your wires out here, all these wires are too long so I'm not overly concerned with them because they're going to be cut shorter. There, so we've got our three wires, one, two, Three. The third wire is for the air brake in this situation, so we've got elevator, rudder, air brake. Alright guys, and I, the way I like to finish off my snakeskin ends is just use uh, zip ties. I find it's the easiest thing to do if you ever need to take it apart. Um, I like it better than shrink wrap. I find that it holds better as well too. And it's just more simple. So I've already fastened the other end, which is close to the servos. And then just put your zip tie around, snip it off, and you're set. So you, you fasten the other end, and then you grab it, and you just pull the snake skin. So now it's nice and tight around everything. And then if you can see it in there, right here. So in this wire bundle, we actually have three wires coming into it. So we've got the elevator, which I've uh, come tight to with the snake skin. You've got the, the rudder, which is right there. And then you've got the, um, the uh, air brake as well, too. So now we're going to feed all those into this, this uh, uh, plastic keeper that I have uh, glued down and uh, route those towards the front. All right, guys, so I'll give you the lowdown on uh, how the wiring worked out here. So we've got uh, these two leads at the back, which are for future afterburners if uh, they want to be installed. Um, the line for the air brake um, is enclosed in snake skin, and it comes down underneath uh, and ties in with that, for that uh, group over there. Um, I'll show you that in a second. 
So looking from this side, this is the right-hand side. So we've got the afterburner line in black. We've got the elevator and rudder in gray. And um, so I've attached these clips. These are uh, pre-sticky 3M clips. And uh, I also use shoe goop because the, you uh, can't rely on the, the uh, double-sided tape for them to stay. Um, as far as clearance goes, uh, the pipes where they sit in here, there's going to be plenty of clearance um, all the way around. So none of these, none of these uh, lines are very close at all. And once we get the pipes installed, I'll show you that stuff. But uh, and then we just route them through the the bottom of the former work there. Now um, I guess if you were to put the the servo lines without the snake skin, they're probably going to be fine. But over time they'll they'll rub on the former work. Uh, on the holes where they go through and who knows they could eventually work their way through the, the covering and then same thing with areas like this where you've got servo lines butt up to wood but uh, that's how the lines are routed and then um, looking on the left side of the plane here so we've got the uh, the future afterburner line which is here so we're just going to coil this up and uh, probably have it sitting right here or we might tuck it in over here um, this is the uh, the lines coming from the back. Now the reason I didn't extend this uh, snake skin any further um, is because we have the wing plugins coming in right over here. So to, to show you on this side, um, so the wing wire harness plugs in right here and we will have those join with the bundles that are going to the front of the plane. So basically we'll have our additional wiring going to the front, bundled up with these guys, and uh, that's how it's going to be be run. So, um, just something to think about if you're uh, wiring up a plane, and um, just pre-think with it all. I guess is the best suggestion. Uh, we put these clips on here as well too. These ones use a zip tie. The reason we use a zip tie clip here is because we're going to have the turbine wiring coming probably over to here and uh, and running with with this stuff so uh, what this is going to look like is we're going to have this come through like that with a nice little loop and then we can zip tie it and it's going to run straight across in this area uh, out of the way of the gear and all that stuff so it'll be sitting up like that nicely anyways guys uh Rudders are complete, which is awesome. Rear wiring is complete, which is also awesome. In the next video, what I'm gonna be working on is mounting the turbines, mounting the pipes, uh, getting the whole rear section completed uh, now that the wiring's done. So if you have any questions, guys, don't forget to list them down below. And additionally, if you have not done so already, you might as well hit that subscribe button down below. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up when you do so. Uh, when you also, when you hit the subscribe button, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos, uh, especially in the, the build series for this F-18. That's it, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. We will see you in the next video.